In episode number 317 of the Reasons I'm Broke podcast, we cover the latest Kingdom Hearts collection. We also have Mark Miller's thoughts on the Aquaman 5-minute extended trailer. Did not expect this reaction from Mark. And our comic book highlight this week is actually a comic book movie highlight. It will be our thoughts on Venom. All of this and so much more on today's show. Hello and welcome to the Reasons I'm Broke podcast, bringing you the reasons we're broke every single week, ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and much, much more. I am the Emperor Palpa Kelly. And I am the Darth Vay Daniel. And for those of you joining us for the very first time, welcome to the show. The way we format it is first we're going to start out with some news, covering all those things I just mentioned. We'll have the Brokehead block where we talk a little bit about our week, our Patreon shoutouts, and then at the very end we will have our movie highlight of Venom. That movie review will be spoiler filled, so that's where we're going to keep it at the very end so that you can still enjoy it if you are one of the few people that, according to this box office, has not seen the movie. (laughs) Yes, we will have some Venom highlights in our news today, but that's not the first thing. Right away, we're just going to jump straight into some news. So finding yet another way, and at Cuban Slim said, you called it, you called it months ago, They have found another way to sell Kingdom of Hearts to fans. Square Enix has, of course, announced Kingdom of Hearts, the story so far. What the fuck is... (laughs) Like, is anyone even surprised anymore? No. (laughs) You want to know my reaction? So so let's finish these highlights. So the collection will package Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8. For thirty nine ninety nine, this will release on the PlayStation Four. Should have been sixty. You, you want to know my first reaction? They said forty dollars, right? Right. We own all these Kingdom Hearts things, right? That's just we bought them all, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "Oh, bringing all of them back out for forty dollars," and my ass went. Hmm, that's a good price. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good deal for we, something we I already own. Right. We might as well just get it. <laughs> just get it again. <laughs> I was disappointed that once again it wasn't sixty. It should be sixty dollars for all of these Kingdom of Hearts games because Kingdom of Hearts fans will gladly pay it. They also should have come out with a collector's edition for each console. So they should have released this on the Xbox One. Totally fine that they didn't though. You can still enjoy Kingdom of Hearts three, jump right into the third one, and you'll enjoy the fun game regardless. But if they had released that collection on the Xbox One, that could have been a different collector's edition. That they would have released that way the Kingdom of Hearts fans would have had to buy this four different ways. <laughs> now you're going too deep. That's too much. They needed to have done a Kingdom of Hearts 1.5 collector's edition to celebrate no. the 1.5 portion of that. No. And then a 2.5 collector's no. edition listen, to celebrate those games. That's too much. It is, not too, it is too never much. too much out for the, the Kingdom two, of Hearts listen, fans. Listen, out of the two of us, who is the bigger Kingdom Hearts fan? How are you gauging this? To whoever played the most? Because then that is me. No. Well, just who is the bigger fan? I don't know. How are you gauging this again? Listen, fine. I look at this as a Kingdom Hearts fan and say $40 is the perfect price point. I already own these, but let me get it again at $40. If you did 50 or 60, my ass would be out. No, you would have Okay, then you're not a true Kingdom of Hearts fan because the true Kingdom of Hearts fans would have begrudgingly, they would have whined and complained, they would have paid it. I don't know what that game you're talking about is, but Kingdom Hearts fans, <laughs> I think after 10 years we're about done. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think? No, you could they're going to what do you mean you're about that after, you mean after 100 years? Because you're going to wait okay, way longer. Let's ask the Broquettes, those out there who are fans of Kingdom Hearts, is $40 the perfect price point or would you have done like Daniel said and bought all the collector's editions and something at a Yeah, Brokehead Core, put on your Square Enix hat yeah. and realistically, like, think about it. Could you not get away with $60 for the full collection of the amazing Kingdom of Hearts series? For the true Kingdom of Hearts fan, I don't think I don't no think price. they could have. I don't think they could have gotten away with sixty bucks. No I really price don't. is too much. We'll ask our broquettes. They can chime in. Hashtag sixty no or sixty yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is set to release on October thirtieth, one day before Halloween. Mm-hmm. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 That song is just going to be stuck in my head forever. I'm not getting this. 
Are you? Do you want to buy this collection? I'm, I'm just saying, forty dollars is a perfect price point. You do want to buy this? If, oh my god! If I if I had time to play these games, sure. Do I? No. I have time to watch Moana over and over and over. So as you said earlier, there is a little bit of Venom news before we head into the full review at the end. After the positive box office for Sony's Venom, producers, congratulations by the way, Sony, on the positive, mm-hmm. and we're going to go into that a little bit more. Producers Avi Arad and Matt Tolmack revealed that Morbius is still set to start filming early next year. If anything, that's fucking confirmation. So you have explained to me who Mo- Morbius is. <laughs> Mobius. Mobius. And I forget. <laughs> He's a vampire. Oh. Spider-Man villain. Oh. Who cares? Someone else for the MCU sheep to say that they can't do it. Not without Spidey. <laughs> it's like, do you guys want Sony to mess with Spidey? Or do you not want Sony to, to leak into the MCU? What I, the fuck do you guys want? I just want, want Disney to make Mobius. <laughs> they would have... They would be like, that's a great move by them. That's just very clever. Yeah. I like that they're going out there and yeah. doing different things. <laughs> but can they, are, is this going to tie into the rest of the movies? <laughs> Producer Matt confirmed that Jared Leto is definitely in for the lead role and spoke on the choice of leads for their new ongoing Sony Marvel Universe. We have a quote here. Quote, this is... The great thing for us now, that an actor like him and an actor like Tom wanted to have their own character, but the character they love, both of them, very hard to get them to do a movie. You actually cannot get them, end quote. But we got them. But they got them. Like, it's a fucking miracle. Like, it is true, though. Like, you don't see them just take on whatever. Mm -hmm. They're very selective. They're both method actors, Mm -hmm. much like Christian Bale, and they do go all out on whatever roles they take they do a lot of research they do a lot of living outside of just the filming (laughs) so jared leto is living as a vampire right now (laughs) wouldn't be like people have made that joke of he's gonna start throwing blood-filled condoms at his cast members based on the stuff that he did for suicide squad what did he do then he sent uh, margot robbie like a dead rat and this other stuff blood-filled condoms that's just something they said i don't know It doesn't matter. Fine. So be it. I'll watch it. I like Jared Leto. (laughs) I don't care what he does outside the set. (laughs) As long as Mobius, Morbius, (laughs) who cares is a good movie. You got to tell me more about this guy. Is he just a vampire and he usually goes against Spider-Man? Yeah, pretty. I'm I'm not a big even Marvel Comics guy. What else does he do? He flies. Like, he can fly regularly. He doesn't, he's not a, like a vampire that just runs around or transforms into a bat. He can actually fly. But what, how do you make a movie about him? I'm still very confused. We'll find out. Who cares? They'll come up with, like, people always assume, like, what kind of story can they make without Spider Craven the Hunter is another one. Well, I'm not saying you can't make a story without Spider Man. I just don't know anything about him. What else does he do? I know, ne- I know is next it, to nothing. What I told you is what I know. Is it a love story? Can it be a love sure, story? Sure, there can be a like, fucking love story. There should hot, be a love so... story. There was a love story in Venom, even. It, it was. Rough, there was two love stories. There, two? Between the symbiote oh, and sh- with us. Sh- <laughs> you're going to spoil it. Don't spoil it for people. All right, all right. We'll leave that for the end of the show spoiling things can you can you like spoil some morbius though because you know everything so just make up something fucking out there and i'm sure it will happen look jeff is my buddy he's not working on no mobius he's working on (laughs) the mobius chair (laughs) god i want to see that on the big screen one day (laughs) but batman has to be in it can we see that play out too that would be like the best fucking movie ever it's not gonna happen what is the joker's identity Which one? There's three. What the fuck? (laughs) Is that how he said it? (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) He wouldn't say that. He'd go, hmm. Yeah, he'd back glare the Mobius chair. Yeah, and the Mobius chair would be like, oh, oh, shit, you're right. I'm sorry. (laughs) I was wrong. And you know what would have happened in his head in that millisecond? Instant plan to take down three Jokers, just in case. (laughs) Five, actually six. And then he would have sent a text to Alfred and, like, it all would have been done. Taken care of. TCO'd. One of our favorite comic book writers, he did Reborn, Red Mm -hmm. Sun, Superman, Marvel Civil War. Mark Miller took to Twitter to praise the latest extended Aquaman trailer. He has no horse in this race, Mm -mm. but he went after a certain company hard as fuck. (laughs) So his tweet from at Mr. Mark Miller 
reads, quote, Aquaman trailer just made modern Marvel look like 70s TV Marvel chums. The green gauntlet has been slapped down and DC's back in the game. A five minute trailer so damn audacious. James Wan, you damn genius. End quote. And why the fuck did he go after Marvel so hard? Like, that's the one thing that I was like, where the fuck did this come from, Mark? What happened? <laughs> How many uh, zeros were on that paycheck that James Wan just sent him? Well, I'm thinking him and James are buddies. Like, much like Jeff and I are. Right, Maybe right. they have that same kind biffles. of magic. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Or he really liked that fucking Aquaman <laughs> trailer. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. You're not going to see it. One, I mean, you were in it. Yeah, there's no point right? in seeing it and if I'm like, already. Two, not to spoil any more things. I will probably watch it. I'm not above watching it, so I could be like, oh, cool. Well, people have been telling me, and that's one thing we could have covered on the podcast and I chose not to include it in the show notes, is we are already sold on the movie. And that's something that I've always said is that if we're, the trailers are only there to sell you the movie. It's to give you a glimpse of, okay, this is what we're making. This is what you may see in the future. Do you want to, are you going to buy a ticket or not? And this five-minute trailer was made, especially for the Marvel sheep. Like, I saw a lot of them praising this on Twitter and on Instagram. And I'm like, all right, I didn't expect that to happen. And now that trailer has sold those people. But on my end, I don't see how someone that is already going to buy a ticket, going to go see it, it's not really going to benefit me. My coworker told me, well, I watch trailers so that I get hyped up before the movie. It's like, I don't need that, especially if I don't want to get excited before I see the movie, because that's also another way you can let yourself down. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, let's just watch it when it comes out, and so be it. Like, I don't get excited, really, anymore for these things. <laughs> I just, like, all right, I'm looking forward to it. That's pretty much it. I don't really start to get like I used to when, like, for example, X-Men 2. That was one of the ones, one of those sequels that I'm like, man, I really want to see Nightcrawler. A Hugh Jackman as Wolverine is incredible. Like, let's let's watch this fucking movie. And then you see that opening scene of Nightcrawler busting into the White House, nearly killing the president. One of the best openings to comic book movies of all time. <laughs> I guess. I, I feel like I'm always hyped for a movie. Like, yeah, we're out of the house. There's no kid with us. <laughs> let's go <laughs> see a movie. I... Don't mind the movie being spoiled for me. So, like, with this five-minute trailer, I'm assuming that it spoils a good portion of the movie, right? From what I understand, it's like a longer scene. I don't know, though. I've seen a lot of GIFs, and the GIFs seem to be from different parts of the mm -hmm. movie. So, I don't know. I'm not too sure. People, of course, the Marvel Sheep have also been whining, like, yeah, I'm excited for this. But it's also spoiled a lot. And James Wan had to even come out on Twitter and say, all, spoil all fucking trailers are spoilers, are spoilers by course. their very own nature. However... This doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of my movie. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like, one, he it is his cut. Like, they didn't S fuck around with him. Sounds like, one, it is his cut. I'm sorry. Jesus. <laughs> it just fits so perfectly together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can watch it. You can let me know what you think. Yeah, I will. After this, I'm going to try and find time in my day to watch a five-minute trailer. Aquaman is set to release on December 21st. They should put that on the poster as approved by Mark Miller, writer of Civil War. Don't just leave it at that because most of the you regular people will say, oh, he wrote Civil War? You know what would get it more people going to see it? The Palp Approval. Palp Approval, as approved by Palpa Kelly. Gotta watch it first, though. I'll still Palp Approve it. Whatever. You're in it. Palp Approve. Yeah. <laughs> I just hand out my Palp Approval to the highest bidder, except for Marvel Sheep. Switching on over to something that many... Of the Brocat core members immediately sent over our way to Discord. Something that does not get palp approval. Never will get the palp approval. Nope. They also tweeted it over to us, tagged us in this bit of what initially was fake news. And now we know that there has been confirmation from Warner Brothers themselves. But initially, according to io9, and then according to the rap, Warner Brothers is in talks, and has signed on Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 writer-slash-director Pedo Perv James Gunn to write and direct Suicide Squad 2. Not palp approved. Palp a disapproval. Look, they, they sent this my way. They wanted to hear a rant. Oh, I'm I mean, ready is that for what it. They, is that what they Here, know? I mean, is me that what slide, they actually want? Let me slide the soapbox towards you. But, I mean, 
You Am just, I really upset though? Cut. Like, do you I know really... you are. Don't. Well, let's, let's I talk have about heard this. about this all fucking week. <laughs> Don't tell me you're not upset. Well, let's let's go over this first. Okay. All right. So, Gunn was, of course, fired rightfully so by mm-hmm. Disney mm-hmm. from Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. Volume Three after his fucking disgusting tweets that were dug up by right wing conservative group, the Daily Center. Good on you, the Daily Center. I may not agree with all of your views, but I do agree with what you what you did in exposing this pedo per for what he had been tweeting mm-hmm. for for many months hundreds of tweets disgusting fucking vile apparently there are people who do not think that this is so vile though because with this rumor now confirmation dave bautista who played drax in guardians of the galaxy one and two for those of you who don't know that's the big gray dumb guy he talked about giant turds yes. and his fucking nipples and and fucking get ready for that shit. <laughs> you want that shit in the fucking DCEU? Well, you fucking get ready for it. So he tweeted back with, quote, where do I sign up? End quote. Baby Bautista, giant fucking baby. So James Gunn and him get along very <laughs> oh, well, very of well. course. Baby Bautista had previously threatened to leave Guardians 3 if James Gunn's script wasn't used and we fucking call them out for being a giant goddamn baby you fucking stay in the mcu or quit i don't give a fuck stay away from my fucking dceu well now that's fucking again not happening people are asking who is warner brothers answering to who are they fucking listening to are they listening to the mcu sheep or are they listening to the core dceu Mm -hmm. fans and after justice league it's very clear where their direction is heading and especially after this fucking disgusting bit of news we know who they're trying to please we also got a response from a suicide squad director david Ayer, who tweeted quote i think it's an incredibly brave and strong move by the studio james is the right man for the job end quote <laughs> god this is disgusting i unless he was being sarcastic i can't Oh, it's a it's a pedophile, Kelly. Like that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> he is. He's a pedo perv. They're supporting this kind of director, this lifestyle. He he even had a buddy. James Gunn had a buddy that was brought down for 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 that kind of a material saved on his devices at home. Mm-hmm. And it's like if that doesn't fucking scare you, I... then just look at one of single fucking tweet. From James Gunn. Maybe it just hasn't sunk in yet, but I still feel like this is fake news. <laughs> so here's where I immediately flip-flopped. Because I told you like 10 minutes ago, it's he's definitely in. The official DC Universe Twitter app also put it out and said, Hey, congratulations to James Gunn officially joining the DC family. And I was like, no, <laughs> shit. What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking do you, do you tips, really topsy turvy fucking world? Do you really think it's Suicide Squad Squad Two? So well, that's the thing, and whatever it is, even if it is Suicide Squad Two, I'm not fucking seeing it. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna go because, as we said with Guardians Three as well, we're not gonna support that shit, and we're not gonna support it on the DC side either. I'll watch everything else not fucking touched by pedal perv James Gunn. I will not watch that fucking shit, and I'm not the only one. A lot of other. Uh, DC Belugas were very quick to say, hell no, fucking skip that shit. I'll support, you know, Joaquin Phoenix Joker. I'll mm-hmm. support Aquaman, Wonder Woman, 1984. Not that fucking nonsense. But people have been speculating that this is either going to be a, even though it's a show on CBS now, and that's something that I didn't put in the news, but didn't feel like we could really expand on it. It's either going to be a Secret Six film, or it's going to be an all new Suicide Squad team so so, because there have been several throughout the years right right so shit i don't care about either (laughs) not anymore like and that's one of the things that people were especially surprised about because margot robbie is huge Mm -hmm. as an advocate on that kind of nonsense so they were saying well you're gonna fucking lose margot robbie if you really do fucking fire pedal perv james gunn so that i mean like you said those are probably the only two options i would see I mean, if they keep him on, and I would hope that the backlash that they're receiving from all the hardcore DC fans would be something that would stop that, right? The DC Belugas, right? right? (laughs) And that's what we're trying to do. Like, we were saying, we managed to get Joe Whedon out from Batgirl. Mm -hmm. Now the focus has changed. And I said it on this court. If this happens to be true, and it is, it is time to refire, hashtag refire James Gunn, 
Hashtag refire pedal perv James Gunn. <laughs> Hashtag fire James Gunn. All fucking three. You're going to see that shit on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Those of you that get those Twitter notifications, you will get a few of those every now and again. Because that is not going to stop. And if it doesn't stop, and if James Gunn does end up filming whatever fucking movie, I don't give a shit if it's a Batman movie, I'm not seeing that fucking shit because I will not support support him or anyone else who's showing up on to catch a predator because they're all in the uh, one in the same <laughs> now all one in the same to me and one of them like some of these to catch a predator guys because they're cast members the characters right i've seen every fucking episode multiple times every single one with chris handsome mm-hmm. and some of those guys had like a short little email chat extent or exchange that was way less than the hundreds of fucking tweets that pedal perv james gunn put out there so to me i'd rather have them I'd watch their fucking Suicide Squad 2, and I'd feel less guilty about it than fucking watching Pedal Perv James Guns. I want to watch Sir Please. I want to watch his Suicide Squad 2. <laughs> <laughs> Batman shows up. It's over, Joker. Sir Please. Sir Please. Sir please. That's the director. He made a cameo. <laughs> and he was a military man, too, so mm-hmm. he, he, should, he deserves way more respect, even, than James Gunn. Fucking nonsense, man. This is what you guys wanted to hear, right? Are you not entertained? Is this not what you wanted? You wanted a fucking blow up? Not a meltdown. Because it's. It, I'm instead condemning. And shame on you, Warner Brothers. It is not a good move. And I have heard the MCU sheep say, fucking good on Warner Brothers. And there's a complete flip-flop yet again on the ideals. Like the DC Belugas are saying, fuck you, Warner Brothers. Fire James Gunn. We don't want that shit here. The Marvel sheep are saying... Well, I'm going to definitely go see James Gunn and support him on the DC side just to show Disney and Marvel Studios the mistake they have made by not having them in Guardians 3. But that's even been splintered. So the Marvel sheep have also been saying and contradicting themselves, which I'm like, but you guys are sheep. You need to follow. And they may. They may just fall into, into line depending on how this plays out. But now one of the bigger Marvel sheep bloggers out there, I'm not even going to say his fucking name, but he was saying, well... He is, James Gunn is absolved of all of those tweets now after having to work on shitty Suicide Squad and haven't been tainted with the DC Universe. It's like, fucking fuck you, you piece of shit. So making millions doing your job absolves you from being a pedo perv. Well, because he's, that's how how these people, that's how these Marvel sheep think. I I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that that's the way that it worked. Well, fuck me. I need to catch my breath here, so let's hear the Papa Kelly's thoughts. Someone that's probably a little more level-headed, or you might just say, yeah, we're just not seeing it. That's it. <laughs> I, I too, am not as riled up about this as you are. I understand your reasoning. I think this is a stupid fucking move on DC's part. I see why they're doing it, because, again, now you have all the Marvel people coming over, right? But the Marvel people are only going to see James Gunn's movie. They're not going to see the rest of the DC universe right so probably you're really not earning anything you're you're getting all your hardcore dc fans are leaving you know not seeing this particular Mm. movie and then you're pulling in a few more marvel people like it's really it's a stupid move and i don't know why they would do that some people were saying marvel studios should now hire Zack snyder to have them him do a marvel studios movie i'd I'd see see that shit too (laughs) (laughs) like they'd have me back on but snyder isn't a pedo perv but he's not yeah so and someone said heaven forbid that Zack snyder would have tweeted even just one of those fucking hundreds of tweets that's that james gunn and uh, the tweet said something like hitler himself could have revealed it to the world and Zack snyder would have gotten more hate over this shit than both having the fact that it's hitler that did it or even james gunn on the other side who had mm-hmm. hundreds of these fucking things not only going after after babies but going after women call going after the lgbt community you fucking name it like he, the only thing they didn't do is he didn't go into the racism bit and it's like you might as well man you went all the way and, <laughs> and obviously the mcu sheep don't give a they fuck and they're just gonna forgive you anyway this leads into a bigger issue that i don't even feel we should go into in this podcast because that's just too much but i mean obviously <laughs> Obviously, this is something that's very real in our world and our country now where men get away with fucking anything. I do feel that if, uh, well, I mean, if a woman had made a pedo type of joke, I think they do get away with it more than. But here's the thing. Women don't really make pedo jokes. <laughs> I know. They never showed up on To Catch a Predator, which is still like an, a mystery to me. But uh, Maceo and I were actually talking about this at the UFC night. And he's like, well, they actually operate differently, whereas the pedo men go out and try to find you know these these other underage people the women are more 
predatorial in a way, oddly, because they're actually going after like their students or people they oh, babysit yeah. or, you know, so they're more, I don't know how you call that. Uh, it, that is, I mean, they're both predatory, I guess. One, you're going out and catching and the other, you're just manipulating. Yeah, I guess. But at the same time, too, I don't know. Women just function differently. But there's this whole fucking hashtag, why I didn't say anything, all that going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see it all over my Facebook of because people are more concerned with ruining a man's future than, you know, protecting a woman's past or a woman's future, all this stuff. So, I, I mean, that that leads into it. And in a way, I hope that soon that we look back and see this kind of shit and say, yes, we shouldn't have stood for it. We, the, you know, the people who said that that was okay, they are the problem, right? It's a fucking embarrassment, Mar Marvel Sheep. I hope you're fucking embarrassed 10 years from now or any time in the future after the bubble has burst and there aren't as many superhero movies. When it's like, holy fuck, man, we actually had a pedo perv and we supported him. And absolved him. Like, fuck off, man. You know what's going to be great is years from now when these Marvel Sheep's kids look back and they say, why'd you fucking support that person? Oh, that's fucking 100% going to oh, happen. Oh, yeah, you know it will. And Leo will ask us and we're going to say, we didn't, Leo. Here, listen we to episode podcast. 317 of The Reasons We've I'm been broke. on the right side of history along with the rest of the Brocat core yes. because otherwise they would not have gotten this far to episode 317 of our podcast if they did not have a similar sense of mentality mm -hmm. and by the way good on also brian Schaub, who was like he was one of the first to say you know it's it's fake news and initially yes it's like fuck i don't fucking believe this and if it's true that's when it's like all right now the fucking gauntlet has mm -hmm. been thrown as mark miller said and the did these belugas infinity gauntlet ah, ah, ah. Uh, we got we got to come up with a better fucking gauntlet than that <laughs> shit the infinity and beyond. <laughs> God, <listen. laughs> I, I don't even care what all new team Pedal Perv James Gunn comes up with. I don't want to theorize. I don't care. Do not care. Who cares? Who cares? Switching on over to the comic book side of today's news. Marvel Comics' is Darth Vader is it's actually one of their most successful comics on the stands right now but it will be coming to an end with issue number 25 this december a five issue mini series shadow of vader will be releasing in 2019 since this one is wrapping up i think it's another case of either the story has been told how far mm -hmm. can you go without going into the actual original trilogy and affecting that too much i know the series that i was reading which people said was better than this, but now, you know, it seems to be about even. It was all about him trying to impress the Emperor, who was just playing... Darth Vader was just the jealous girlfriend, and the mm -hmm. Emperor kept stringing him along, which is what I loved. I don't know what this new series is, but realistically, you really can't do a huge amount of Vader. They already explored everything in between the original trilogy, right. and this series is everything from when he got put into that suit up until episode four so how many how much more can you really say i feel like you can't really do a whole lot and then in addition to that you have people with a certain mindset of what vader is right because you see so much of him in the movies and you don't but i, I know I what mean, you're saying you see his beginning and his end right so sure. you're very limited in that amount of time because you see him all the way up from anakin Right. Until he dies. So one, one through six, there's the story of Vader. Exactly. So you have just that small amount of years, what, 20 years or something like that, mm -hmm. where you can really do stuff with him. So like you said, how much story can you tell? But also, how much can you really expand on him without people going, oh, well, that doesn't explain the end. Oh, yeah. And Star Wars fans will call you out of on course. it. Of course. Metachlorians. <laughs> Leave the Metachlorians alone. <laughs> they are a legit... And one of the best parts of Star Wars, one of the parts that I'm most fascinated with. So leave it alone. That gets the the <laughs> the Darth Vader Daniel protection. Okay, I would like them to do a comic about Darth Vader Daniel. This would be great. Well, they just came out with uh, Barack Panther. So why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not Darth Vader Daniel? Maybe we'll. It would. It would be <laughs> Darth Vader Daniel: The War Against Pedo Perves. <laughs> yes, you'd be going out. And I team up with Chris Handsome. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Fuck yes. Have a seat here. Boom. Got him. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Let's he'd, go. He'd be sitting in like his dark room in front of his like laptop screen, like typing stuff like, <laughs> and then you just hear boom and see like the red light. <laughs> Have a mission. And then you'd be like, Pedal Perv, James Gunn, your angel of death awaits. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that that the lightsaber is just him being knocked off the DCEU. That's not. It's not. And it's 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 mm, Star Wars: The Mask of the Phantasm Menace. <laughs> that's that's the first arc right there. We'll throw it up on on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. I'm not making this shit. Don't put that on me. <laughs> Don't throw that up anywhere. On to the DC side. DC will be sending replacement copies of Batman number 56. Just came out about two weeks ago. The issue featured a foil cover that was damaged on every single copy with a bend or crack next to Batman's right hand. And that's something that anytime something a little bit odd like that happens where they create a foil cover and all like, you know, 40, 50, 100 copies are damaged in the exact same spot. Most of the time, Diamond, which is the comic distributor, will not take it back. Mm -hmm. It's considered a production issue rather than a damaged copy. So it's just like, well, there's no clean copies out there. So, oh, well. This is what you get. But this is an exception to that rule because it sounds like DC is going to be sending those to comic shops on Wednesday, October 31st to your local comic shop. So if you do have a copy of Batman number 56... At no charge to the comic shop, they will be sending these extra copies. So theoretically, you should be able to just swap it out mm -hmm. with an undamaged copy. I mean, how bad on is that the Wednesday. damage? Is it significant? I I was not bothered by it, but I'm also not a I need a nine point eight so I can CGC it and then flip it on eBay kind of guy. Right. Like I don't want a damaged copy either. I do want a nice copy, but that's just because the, of the collector in me, not because I'm going to sell these mm -hmm. one day. Because that one little crack won't really affect it that much because this isn't a first appearance. This is not a significant well, issue. And then you argue too, like they were all like that, right? It right. wasn't just mine. It wasn't 10 of them. It was every single copy. Which even if you were to play by CGC's rules, like they would, they take that into account mm -hmm. and they will actually give you a higher grade if all copies were like that. Uh, so if you want to swap it out, if you do care, then those will be available. But I, to me, I'm just like, oh, that's kind of crummy, but whatever. I, it didn't bother me that much. And there, and I have come across issues that I'm like, all right, let me swap this out or swap it out for uh, an undamaged copy that you then report to Diamond. So mm -hmm. to me, not a big deal, mm -hmm. but why not? If they're free of charge to the comic shop, except for the fucking shipping, that's where we get screwed. But to the reader, to the subscriber, it's not a, not a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Keeping up with the DC news, in an interview with Polygon, CCO of DC Comics, Jim Lee, expressed that the company will be re-examining their line of DC Black Label comics in the future. This also fucking pissed me off. Like, this might have pissed me off almost as much, if not more, than the James Gunn bit, the pedal perv James Gunn bit. We have a quote here from Jim Lee who said, quote, It's made us certainly look at what Black Label is and think about whether these elements are add additive to the story. And that's something that we'll be mindful of going forward because I don't think we want necessarily a repeat of what happened with the first issue. End quote. Yes, you fucking do, Jim. <laughs> you fucking want Batman Damn Number One to happen again. So I I will just deep breath, Daniel. <laughs> I don't think he's necessarily saying we're not going to put offensive things in our comics. That one hundred percent is what that's, he's saying. No, that's not. Okay, what, he's what are saying. they changing then, Kelly? What are they changing? He didn't say. He said they're re-examining it. What they're are they looking re at again? Then? What are they looking at again? Maybe the way we market it. Ooh. What marketing anything? No. Yeah. They marketed that as a mature book. Yes. It's, it's and, DC Black Label. And, but they didn't, uh, and I mean, they shouldn't have to do this, but they didn't warn people. They didn't say it's mature because there's a penis, right? It's called DC or, Black Label. That's your fucking warning. Or they didn't bag it up before people you know when it was on the stand so people couldn't flip through it it says dc black label on it that's your bag all right if if that's if that's fine with you that's fine zero percent of people that came into my shop were offended by the bat dick by the bat penis i need to stop saying bat dick because people are getting confused like dick grayson why is he offensive <laughs> by batman's penis Zero percent of people. Okay. In fact, we... I still get asked for Batman Dam number one, <laughs> and people are signing up for two and three because we... heaven forbid we might see Batman scrotum or Batman's asshole. We were not offended, but we are a small majority, right? At the end of the day, they're still running a business. CBS didn't talk about this shit. ABC it didn't even trend on Twitter. No one cared that you saw Batman's dick, except for that one single Florida retailer right here in our backyard that whined about it and refused to make money off of his Batman damn number one because, heaven forbid, he sees someone else's dick other than his own. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to think from a business standpoint, okay? I'm trying to use my business mind to think of why they would do this. And there I don't was zero think, backlash. And I don't think that they're necessarily getting rid of the offensive things in the, their books. I think they're just going to ship them differently or market them differently or or find some way to warn people because realistically, and I don't know this 100%, but maybe if they had said ahead of time, hey, there is nudity in this book. Do we think this guy would have purchased some and then been all pissy about it? No, because he 100% wouldn't, ha- wouldn't have had a leg to stand on at that point because yes, you were warned there's nudity. Who cares if it's a woman or it's Batman's penis, right? If we still said nudity, you can't say shit. I hope that they are just re-examining their marketing. I 100% hope that, I'm, like, you're the optimist in this, obviously, and I'm like, you know what? I hope that that is what happens. That is not what's <laughs> going to fucking happen. You don't know that. The other issue's here's, got the lead. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If Okay, again, I'm looking at it from a business standpoint, right? That, right, correct. That's sure. what I'm doing. So I'm looking at it, and I'm saying... Some people were pissed off because they didn't know what was in this book, mm-hmm. and obviously there was a penis. But on the flip <laughs> this is side, that we're talking about this. <laughs> on the flip side, because there was this penis, we sold out. We sold so many books because of this. So why why am I still going to pull that out of my books? I'm not. I'm just going to market it differently so that those people who were pissed off can know ahead of time if they're going to purchase this or not. If that were the case, they would have done second printings, left the bat penis in, and polybagnum. Because then you could have sold even more copies. Instead, they refuse to do second printings, censored or uncensored. They're not doing them at all, which is a terrible business decision, in my opinion, because I could have sold several more copies of the second printing. But the fact that they delayed two and three, and I would have believed you, I would have been like, okay, maybe they're adding an extra warning on the cover. Maybe they're back, you know, bagging them. Maybe they are going to let the writer and the artist tell their story so as not to piss them off because it has sold so well. But instead, because they're not doing those second printings, that's what tells me that that is not the road they're taking. Maybe they're just making the book more valuable <laughs> by not doing second printing. Hey, comic shops, hey, here's a bone. <laughs> no. <laughs> And DC is good to comic shops, but come on, <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> Listen, let me just be optimistic about this. I do like that Jim Lee, uh, by the way, he went on Polygon, did an interview, who Polygon also lost along with us right. for the 2018 Podcast Awards. So, Jim, so that gives if you want to come on, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're not even hope, but if it gives us like another legitimacy, like if you want to just step over, not step up, not step down, just, just step over. over to our podcast mm-hmm. and talk about what you really mean. By your new re-examining of DC Black Label, let us know. Brookhead Corp, one of you wants to tag them, go for it. You know, I'm not going to go out of my way, but you want to give him a little time stamp there, then he is more than invited <laughs> and, and he can listen to the past interviews. You know, I, I, I am legitimately curious as to what we're going to get from Black Label in the future. And I'm the optimistic one, Jim, so you can come on and talk to me. <laughs> if we get more nudity in the future, we'll know with two, with issue number two, mm-hmm. which step they ended up taking. Maybe they just defined the penis even more, brought it out into the light. (laughs) (laughs) I was just wearing a strap on. Kidding. It's like, well, it's not nudity. He just has a dildo on. (laughs) 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 It's like, which is less offensive? (laughs) Like, would would people be like, I "Hmm, I I guess that's better. (laughs) No, I would much rather it just be all Batman. All natural. Yeah, (laughs) instead of like a dildo. I don't know. Dildos are freaky. (laughs) Why would he be wearing a strip on? Because it's less offensive than actual nudity, according to these this one retailer. It's only because he doesn't. He's like a little gay, and he doesn't. Yeah, want he people to know. Yeah, he felt some feelings. Yeah, that's right. He, he couldn't like, just look at it and go a penis. Move on. So that does wrap it up for our news this week. It was a good amount of news. I had a lot to talk about. It's always good when I have a lot to say. I'm still hot headed, but <laughs> yeah, got to cool off well, here for a sec. Hopefully, our bro cat block. We'll bring some happy memories to the forefront of your mind because that's what we are moving into next. Our bro cat block. What happened with Daniel and I this week? Well, we had, we celebrated little Leonardo's birthday. If you go back on the podcast a year ago, we started having those guests on. Thank you so mm-hmm. much again forever for being on that string of episodes while Kelly recovered from that, that birthing of Leonardo Ugh. a year ago. And we got to celebrate (laughs) mentally and physically. (laughs) Uh, We we celebrated the little man's first birthday Mm -hmm. uh, this past week. We did. It was so exciting. He got to have two birthdays, two smash cakes. 
bunch of presents. Both grandparents had mm-hmm. to have their own little party, of and course. we celebrated more than happy to, and he was happy to have even more cake <laughs> and even more toys to play with. But in addition to that, because it wasn't just like, you know, he had his birthday, which was great and exciting, and I can't even believe we have a one-year-old, but then two days later, he started walking. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, I'm one now. I'm good. He was at my parents, so at Abuelo y Abuela's mm-hmm. home. Where he also crawled for the first time when he went after the doggy bowl. Mm -hmm. And he was apparently sitting down watching baseball and he just up and started walking. (laughs) Yep. And so now he's also walked for the first time at at my parents' home too. So they have like this sense of pride as well. (laughs) (laughs) Which they should because my dad practiced a hell of a lot with Mm -hmm. him in the backyard and getting him to walk. And after like he started walking, they're like, holy crap. And that's, and they got their second and third a uh, clip of him walking because that's mm-hmm. when they're like, oh, okay, do it again. And sure enough, he just fucking walked from one end from the living room to the kitchen. I got to see those videos. It's still really bizarre for me because I've only known him to crawl right. for so many months. And now he's just like up and walking. It's it's kind of weird. He's like a little toy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also a big man because he got, so he's walking. He had his first birthday. He got a big man haircut. So he actually looks like a little boy now, right? He's not just a little baby anymore. He's doing all these big man things i don't know it's it's hard for me as a mom because again in my mind he's still that little baby that i brought home right and now only a year later he's doing all these things and you know another year from now he'll be a completely different baby terrible twos and threes yeah oh we're i mean we're already halfway there he gets very angry at me he does have a little attitude when i tell him no yeah Mm-hmm. But he's eating all solid food now, you know, mostly he only takes a bottle for nap time or bedtime and they just, they grow up too fast. Cause I remember he was just, just this little thing and now he's huge, still short. <laughs> <laughs> for his age, yeah. <laughs> uh, look who you bred with though and who you, how high, how I mean, tall you are. <laughs> I mean, I am pretty short too. According to the internet, he's going to be 5'10". Okay. I, 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 did, right. I did this internet thing where you enter like the mom's height and the dad's height and they tell you the baby's height and it was accurate for both you and I. So we'll see. <laughs> so all three of us will still be taller than Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. And Wolverine. Yes. Wolverine's like four foot, isn't he? He's yeah, tiny. he's tiny. Like he's five something. He, people forget that because they assume because of Hugh Jackman. Right. And I think even in the comics, they kind of heighten him up some, mm-hmm. but it's like, no, he's, a, he's fucking like Danny DeVito's height. <laughs> <laughs> he's super short. But how does it feel for you to have a one-year-old other than odd? It, it doesn't feel like one-year-old. Mm-hmm. like, And that's why we take pictures and we take videos because every now and again, we'll lay down and we'll just watch old videos of him. And it's stuff that I re-remember, things that I for, have forgotten. And you've probably forgotten oh, exactly so what much. it was like I, because I mean... of the non-sleep, because of the constant awareness, because of the constant tiredness mm-hmm. and, and our work, of course. So it's, it's always important if you... If you are planning to have kids, Brokehead Core, you you do want to record as much as possible because you're not going to remember it the way that you do. Even when you're living that moment and you're like, I'm trying, I'm going to remember this, you're not going to remember it. So it's always good to have those moments. And that one year, because you don't remember so much of it, does not feel like a year. It does not feel like we've had them for Mm -hmm. really that long. And I know it's like... It's felt like we've had them our whole life. It's like, no, it, it not to me. It feels like it's, it has not been a year. Right, right. I mean, it's definitely been a moment in our life, right? But no, it definitely doesn't feel like a year. It doesn't feel long. But, you know, there's, I remember certain moments, but for sure the first four months, probably the first six months, I don't really remember. Just because, again, exhaustion. And then especially when I went back to work, you know, there's it's working home and working home and not sleeping. So it's balancing out now that he's sleeping a little bit better. He wakes up about once a night. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I get up and, you know, change his diaper and then he's fine and he goes back down. And he'll sleep 12 hours, right? So it's getting better. But it's still, I mean, it's tired and it's it's stressful and there's something new every day. It's easier in some ways and it just continually morphs right and difficult in others so right. it's still as difficult as it has been <laughs> i don't think it's as difficult like i can put on well, moana good, good on you. <laughs> and, and he'll sit there and he'll watch moana well something that he did watch was the halloween parade yes at epcot that we got to go to magic with... kingdom yeah well i'm sorry uh, yeah i have my notes that we went to epcot too but or i went to epcot but at, at magic kingdom we went with at with bobby at cuban slim and pia so it's been it, it was a lot of fun. We mm-hmm. we got to go to the Halloween party 
the whole thing to anyone that has never been to Disney or even has never been to the Halloween party is Magic Kingdom essentially closes down at about 7 and they retheme the whole park to be Halloween. Mm -hmm. And you can only go to that even if you have your park ticket for the day. No, fuck you. You have to buy, you have to buy another ticket just to come into the Halloween party. So it's a little more exclusive and tickets always sell out. But you were able to get us some tickets for the Halloween party. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went with Bobby and Pia and then you, me, and Leo to this Halloween party, which was also the first time that Leo had been to the Magic Kingdom. Right. And he got to go during a time in which people were in costumes. The whole thing was decorated. There was Halloween music. You got to see Oogie Boogie, which maybe I've seen once or twice mm -hmm. before, but I actually got to see him in the parade walking down the fucking street. Looked fucking good. Like Bobby pointed out, yeah, he's a little small, but holy fucking shit like it looked amazing the halloween party is my favorite time of year uh, and we've been several years in the past right so i always enjoy it like you said there's less people in the park it's right. a lot of fun they have candy stations set up so we can just go in and out and get candy and walk all around walk on to pretty much every ride that you want to later on in the night yeah the parade is fantastic the fireworks are my favorite leo did get tired halfway through because it was way past his bedtime so he and i got to chill and take a nap for a little bit um, he got to meet moana who yeah, was like his old. girlfriend. <laughs> so it was so funny because we we're waiting in line and he fell asleep in line and he woke up right as we got to the front. So he woke up to Moana being there and he just <laughs> looked at me like, Mom. <laughs> like, Shit, I better fall asleep more often at the Magic Kingdom. His fucking dreams come true in this she fucking She was bitch. so cool though because she was talking to him the whole time. Like, want to go on an adventure with like me and Pua and Hey Hey? And I'm like, yeah, here, take him. <laughs> I'll sleep tonight. Later, bye. <laughs> go back tomorrow. <laughs> like, you're good. So he enjoyed that. He got to ride Pirates of the Caribbean for the first time, which is my favorite ride in the Magic Kingdom. And he was <laughs> so scared. <laughs> Anytime I tried to move away from him, he's like, no, Mom, <laughs> come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got rid of the mermaids. Yeah. Which was, I guess, hashtag 2018 because it's a, a female skeleton of a mermaid tied, tied up, up. And it's like, oh, all right. And they got rid of the redhead, which mm -hmm. is a big thing with I you. I mean, it, it was. It, it not made me upset. Of, but... she, they didn't get rid of her. She's a pirate now. They're... So for those of you who never rode the ride, there was a portion where one of the pirates is auctioning off women. Correct. <laughs> buy a wench. Is, yes, buy a wench, a bride, bride wench, whatever. And he's auctioning off one of the women, and the next one in line is a redhead, and all the men are shouting, we want the redhead. Which, as a redhead, I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> we are the better of the winches <laughs> to be purchased. Uh, so now she's an actual pirate, and they're auctioning off things. So, like, pictures and furniture i don't know yeah and there's like men and women both like in line with their products to sell and they're all chained up as well right and the redhead is now a pirate that is also auctioning off these people so they've actually brought her down a criminal status yes. and to, to me i'm like you haven't really elevated her <laughs> like it's like but they're selling her off it's like but now she is selling other people's possessions well, and, and burning this town down the thing. when they were selling her off she wasn't unhappy about it that's true. She was flaunting. Yeah. I remember that. She yeah. was like, mm, and she was like very busty and like she was ready to go. <laughs> ready to go to one of these fucking alcoholics. Oh, man. <laughs> they were creepy looking. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm upset about it. But again, hashtag 2018. Like, you know. I guess so. You had to change it, I guess. They got rid of the mermaid songs as mm -hmm. well. And I think I remember like very early on, they did have the spotlight of like the tails going right. by, which I like freaked me out because I remember that scene mm -hmm. in that, you know, bad pirates movie. But I'm like, <laughs> man, that's fucking freaky. Like, what if they have that? And then they have the singing and then they have the, the, the skeleton, which is mm -hmm. amazing. It's a shame. Like Bobby pointed out, it looks really bare now. Like right. it's just like, and I know that's how it was before, mm -hmm. but it just doesn't look right change i guess it'll be fine most people won't really care so i don't know that's one portion of it we got to go on haunted mansion bobby and i which also was another kind of upgrade to it because on the halloween part they actually have live actors out on the lawn playing ghosts and they have like a type of light on them that makes them look like they're glowing mm -hmm. in the dark so they're out there and they're improvising and they're pointing out people's you know, hats or glasses or they're saying hi to people and they're telling stories. There's a dead butler ghost that walks up at some point and ta starts talking to them. And it's just really neat to see this different side to all these rides that we're normally pretty familiar with because mm -hmm. we do live in the central Florida area. 
Overall, if you guys do live in the area or if you're coming to visit Disney, definitely recommend the Halloween parties. They start like the end of August and run all the way up through Halloween. Definitely go if you can. You know, it runs, what, 7 p.m. to midnight? Yeah. So pretty late if you have little ones, but definitely worth it. Also, as I mentioned earlier in Epcot, Julian from the Lazy Gaming Mm -hmm. Guys came right on over from Texas and visited Scott mainly. But also I got to finally, he visited, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say that he visited Scott and myself and (laughs) Purple Swordfish Mm -hmm. and Russell and his family, I suppose, (laughs) (laughs) here in in Florida. And Mm -hmm. we actually got to hang out way more, way longer than when he came out last year, which I think we only hung out at Chili's and ended up falling asleep at Chili's. So in this case, he came out to Florida. We went to Epcot and he also, he greeted like the night, the day he flew in, he drove, he rented a car. He drove to the comic shop I work at and he showed up like this. So this is where you work at. I'm like, holy shit, Julie. And he hung out for like two hours and looked at some comics. We caught up. And then a few days later, we went to Epcot, Scott and I and Julian, and we drank around the world. And while Julian very reluctantly drank every every drink, and he did make a face after taking <laughs> every 100% of sips, except for the Marai family sake, which he fucking drank that shit so quick. I'm like, God damn, that's the strongest drink we've had today. But everything else, it was like a struggle, I guess. But he stayed about two drinks behind me. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm impressed. Like, respect. And he even said, like, yeah, when I get back, like, He's going to have more confidence in his, you know, drinking abilities because he stayed two drinks behind me. Now, I did not tell him that I did not get as many beers in me because we were waiting for him to finish his. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But he's listening. He knows now. Regardless, he drank (laughs) way more. He drank way more than I expected. Way more than I expected. And I told him, like, you know what? We had the snake bite. We had Mm -hmm. the other drinks before that. And he had the Mariah family sake, which was he was very reluctant to, but he drank that shit like it was water. Did you get the Belgian coffee? No, we didn't get that. Oh, man. Shit's good. I did get a Belgian beer. No. But no, I did not get the coffee. You should have gotten the coffee. I, I don't do chocolate or coffee in alcohol form too well. Oh. It doesn't sit well with me. I mean, you sipped it last time we went and you thought it was delicious. Like, it's good. I can't have a whole thing of it, though. Mm. I could. Just pour that shit in a water bottle. Mm. Yeah, it was good seeing Julian, though. It was it was awesome. He and Purple Swordfish did a stream that you can check out on Purple Swordfish's channel. And I can't wait for him to come back mm-hmm. over again. Or if, if he'll have me, I'll happily, Scott and I, maybe we'll make a trip over to Texas. Who knows? It'll be a lot of fun. I still want to do a cruise. <laughs> I do. I want to do a cruise with my friends, maybe some listeners. So can I do a cruise with my friends then too? Sure. So you'll watch Leo? I, I have to, right? For like three <laughs> Was he days. Was he going to come with you? <laughs> for like three days and I'll go on a cruise with my friends? I'll do my best. A mommy cruise. That sounds great. I did join. Did I mention it last time that I joined my mommy fitness class? Uh, you did not, oh, I don't think. Oh, I found a mommy fitness class. And so it's moms and all their kids in strollers. And we go and work out together and complain about our kids being little assholes. <laughs> <laughs> like we were all doing one thing and all the, all the kids were fussing in their strollers. And the workout lady's like, just let them fuss. And we're all like, okay. Interesting. <laughs> and we kept doing it. So it was a lot of fun. And now I'm sore everywhere. That's all it takes. Someone mm-hmm. to say, just let them. This is about you. And, And you know, it was nice to hear that. There you go. (laughs) Final thing in the BroCap block is that some of you already know, some of you may or may not have purchased these, but on TeePublic, per our usual every three months, which I've got two designs left on the, on the, I don't know what you call it, on dock to release. So I'm going to have to either design more, get more ideas, but we have two all new TeePublic shirt Mm -hmm. designs up on thereasonsimbroke.com and these are a TRIB design and it says podcast at the bottom. It I, I'm really happy with it. It's like a designer type of shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of it. And you know, I, I did both of these. So it's like, you know, I, I, it, it's hard for someone who create and you can talk to any artist to be like, you know what, that turned out all right. And usually it's like, fuck, I could have improved this. But I, with the t-shirts, it's like, I'll just keep working on it until I feel like I'm happy with mm-hmm. it. So that's what happened with these two designs. And that's the first one. And on the back, it has our website on it. And I didn't want to just put our website. That's kind of plain. So I did like these, you know, little blocks of outlines on it. Did the WWE, and the WWW, and then the com and all of that. So that's on the back, which is a new thing that they started offering on Tee Public, So it's a cool way to also promote the podcast. I know a lot of you do an awesome job of that already. We're really happy about that, but you can also wear it. 
So give your voice a rest, man. Just just give it a rest. <laughs> you will do fine. Wear the t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And and that's also available. It's like a light gray. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about the second one? I really like it, too. That's the Kelly Ann one. Yeah, how about a design. And yeah, that one's really cool, too. I like both of them. You did a fantastic job. Kelly and Daniel and Batman and Ocean, Ocean Master. Master. <laughs> Can I design the next one? Sure, by all means. Is it a Buzz Lightyear? Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> we will sell 0% of them. I think we will sell some. I really don't think we will. <laughs> we will. My shitty ass stick figure Buzz Lightyear. People will be like, oh, is this Leo's drawing? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I want to support Leo. You should. You should support Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and also, a Swaylock was asking, how come it's not Kelly and Batman and Leo and Ocean Master? And I was like, well, when Leo starts contributing to the podcast a little more, maybe <laughs> then mean, he, does he can sometimes. get a spot. We don't let him. We ship him off to Nana's house. Yeah, because we'd be juggling him up and down, and he'd be bumping into the mic. He's way more active now. That's what he'd be doing. And going, (laughs) 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 There's there's Leo's contribution right there. (laughs) Let's head into the uh, the Patreon shoutouts of the week before we head into our review of the Venom movie. This week, we have four shout-outs. The first one goes out to John, whose Twitter handle is at John72Tex. His Instagram is at Johnny2Chips. He often shares his CGC comic books, original artwork, and statue collection. Cool. Definitely check him out because he is the quintessential collector of not just comics, but all of the things that make us broke. We also have Brian, whose Twitter handle is at BrianShalp1. As I mentioned earlier, he was one of the first to quickly call out the James Gunn Suicide Squad rumors as fake news, and I am waiting to hear where he stands, and and he always stands 100% correct on everything on mm-hmm. this, so I should not be surprised when he does, but it is hashtag fire refire James Gunn time, and I'm sure he will follow through, but otherwise... A, a proper skeptic, as you should be, especially from io9, like, holy fuck, like, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Our third shout out goes out to Christian, whose Twitter handle is at WhiteHispanic58. He shared the Nature is Scary GIF of the Rolling Spider, which you got to see. Why did you show me that? You knew. For you, the, for the you, podcast. You no, know, you knew. He's a Patreon backer. You, I get that he's a Patreon backer, but, and we love all of our Patreon supporters, right? I'll just preface by saying that. But what is more important? Me seeing a video that terrifies me <laughs> or having me be able to talk about something for our Patreon backers. What month are we in? I don't care about October spooky things and it is spooky October. things. I, and that you is know, spooky. You want to know what we what I relive every October, which is hard <laughs> enough, is pushing your giant headed son out of me, <laughs> which was difficult enough. So why would you show me? Okay, you know what that spider looked like? It was not only a spider, but it was also a tumbleweed, which is also <laughs> another one of my fears. It's so a scary combination. Why would you show me that? I don't even understand. I thought you loved me. Because nature is, it's, it's scary, but it's also lovely. It is right? It's a pretty cool evolutionary type of thing That's to have. so scary. Why couldn't you show me the cute little frog tumbling down? Because he did down? not tweet that. There is that stuff. That stone frog. You remember that? I know. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> like, and I would rather... Like the stone frog? You could have just said, hey, Kelly, there's a spider that blows in the wind like a tumbleweed. And I would have said, fuck that shit. You didn't have to show <laughs> it like, to I me. I believe you. I do believe you. Kelly, there's a I spider believe... that shoots lasers I, I, it probably out of its legs? It's probably in Australia. <laughs> so we're good. It swims? <laughs> I believe it. I believe it swims across whole oceans. It tweets fake news. It's awful. <laughs> The president's a spider. (laughs) (laughs) And our final Patreon backer who did not post spider things is Kat, whose Instagram is at Katsha. By the way, spiders are super cool. No, they're not. They are super cool. They're terrifying. If I were the president, now we're compared to a spider. That's kind of like spiders are amazing. I never kill them. I never kill them. They kill me. They don't try to kill you. They do try to kill me. Do you not remember that one that showed up in the shower or all the ones who tried to crawl on me when I was <laughs> There's pregnant? There's one in the shower now. What? Yeah, it's in my my conditioner bottle. What? 
It's you didn't chilling. sell me. I'm, I'm letting it chill. I like spiders again. I would not be upset at you saying someone's a spider is totally fine. But I'm like, oh, that's a compliment. Scary. That's cool. They're not. They're not scary. They try. The only spider they, I put up with is that big ass one by my parents' door, and that's because he leaves me the fuck alone. He catches. I hope he catches wasps. Just fuck wasps. He probably does, but listen, I don't like spiders. Spiders are to me as wasps are to you. Should I be like, wasps are okay? But, the, but what you'd if be I lying. was like, what you'd if I was like, like, what do wasps do? What if I was like, Daniel, there's a wasp chilling in my shampoo bottle and then the you shower. fucking kill it. What good is a wasp? They don't even make honey. I listen, I am just I'd rather showing wasp you, direct suicide squad too. <laughs> <laughs> I am just showing you what your spider love is doing to me. As we were saying, Kat on Instagram at Katsha. She shared her vinyl collection on Instagram, including her Taylor Swift album of Reputation. I didn't know they still came out with, like, vinyl versions of all of these. Oh, I mean, not all of them, but some of them. So, like, Maroon 5 has a bunch of vinyls. So, I guess if you're big enough, right, yeah, that makes sense. then you get some. I haven't heard Taylor Swift's Reputation. I know part of the song. So, I'm guessing it's the latest Yeah, album? it's okay. her newest one. I listened to the one before this. And then now I just listen to Pandora because it's free. I do need the new Maroon 5 CD, though, because that's got Leo's favorite songs on it. The one that we played for him today as he was getting his vaccinations. Yes, that was very sad. Tough day for the little man. Mm -hmm. But we do want to thank all of our Patreon backers for your backing for the Reasons I'm Broke podcast. If you, too, would like your shout out, head on over to thereasonsimbroke.com. Scroll on down to our Patreon banner. Click on that. You are good to go for as little as $1 a month equals out to 25 cents an episode. You two get your shout out. You contribute to the podcast with what you tweet, what you Instagram, what you Facebook, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want us to cover, we will put it on the podcast. But of course, our podcast will always be free. The best thing you can do is reach out to us on Twitter. Let us know what you think of the show. Let, you, let us know what you want us to talk about on the show. Respond with, I forgot what my hashtags were earlier. <laughs> Hashtag free fire James Gunn yes, is what you were saying. Yes, that one too. That one too. But the reason we do this show is for all of you. So let people know about us as well. Huge thanks to Joss at uh, decalavenue.com for the help at the $5 tier. And you can also leave us a voicemail if you want to be heard on the podcast. The link is in the description. But otherwise, speakpipe.com slash the reasons I'm broke. You can leave us an up to 90 second voicemail. A question, feedback, whatever it is, your vote via voice, and you can be heard right here on the podcast. We always love to hear from you guys. Let's head into our final portion of today's show, which is our movie review for Venom. <laughs> this will be very spoiler filled, so if you have not seen the movie, you do not want spoilers. This is where we can say goodbye. Thank you for tuning into the show. But if you say, yes, let me hear your thoughts. I have been waiting for this moment. Here it is. Venom is directed by Ruben Fleischer, who previously did Zombieland and Gangster Squad, which we saw with Thanos, uh, Josh Brolin. And it's written by Jeff Pinkner, who wrote The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Scott Rosenberg, who wrote Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Kelly Marcel, who wrote Saving Mr. Banks. That throws me, because how do you go from The Amazing Spider-Man, Jumanji, to Saving Mr. Banks? <laughs> three different writers. Well, I, I mean, three very different movies. <laughs> so this is starring Tom Hardy, who was in Inception and The Dark Knight Rises, Michelle Williams from Marilyn and Blue Valentine, and Reese Ahmed, who was in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Nightcrawler. So before we go into our thoughts on the movie itself, we've got a little bit of news to cover on this 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 good on Sony <laughs> type of start to their Venom verse is what we're calling it here at the Reasons I'm Broke. According to Deadline, Venom surpassed projections with a two hundred and five point two million dollar opening weekend globally. Shit. Beautiful Sony, well fucking done, <laughs> well done Sony. Venom's opening weekend surpassed the recent Ant Man and the Wasp's one sixty one million from Marvel Studios. Well, look at that shit. Shit. The MCU sheep do not like that at all. They don't like that a Sony movie did better than one of their precious Disney Marvel Studios nonsense junk food movies. 
Also, for comparison, Spider-Man Homecoming brought in two fifty-seven million, so not that high. So, Much higher. Yeah, like you, you are fifty million away from the Disney-made Spider-Man yeah. that they fucking paid, or probably overpaid at this point mm-hmm. now, because Sony could have. May, probably made something close to that if they just redid their own Spider-Man movie at this point. So good on Venom for getting that fucking close. Like that has Disney going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Venom still has to open in Denmark, France, Hong Kong, and Japan, which it will do in the next 30 days. So we'll probably see that number continue to rise. So even more money. So to all of you fucking Marvel sheep, to all of you MCU sheep that were hoping that this would fail, you were sharpening your knives and they did. Mm-hmm. All of the critics, all of the bloggers immediately trashed this fucking movie. And went after it hard as if it were a DCEU Zack Snyder movie in the hopes that Sony would lose its full license of the Spider-Man universe and could then have to sell all of it just like Fox over to Disney so that Venom and Spidey and Black Cat and Silver Sable and more Mobius could all be <laughs> Disney so that mm-hmm. they can crack, fart, and nipple and turd jokes. But fuck off because fucking Venom has said hell fucking no. Shot off his fucking webs. Shot off his fucking... Fucking slime symbiote. Fine. No webs in this one. Shot off his symbiote and said, fuck off, Disney. We've got this down pat right fucking here. And sure enough, we are there rooting for him. And you can already tell there are problems with this movie, but we're going to go into it. We are happy that Sony has begun their Venomverse because we should have a diversity Mm -hmm. of superhero films. As much as the MCU sheep don't want that, they can go fuck themselves because now we've got Sony's Venom. We've got Hellboy. And we've got Warner Brothers as Aquaman right around the corner, to say the least. So this is the fucking world I want to live in. I don't want to live in a world where everyone falls down to Disney's knees just like 20th Century Fox. Or to to have other films directed by J- Pedal Perv James Gunn. This is what I fucking want. <laughs> So the way we're going to format our review, we're going to talk about the story, the acting, the directing, and the special effects. What do we do in the past? Like out of five symbiotes is something rather. That's that's kind of the the type of th- thing that we yeah, went with. Do you want to do a symbiote? We could do like brains. Five uh, tater, do... frozen tater tots is what we're going to do. Frozen tater we'll go tots. Into that Perfect. One. So the plot itself is the first bit we're going to mm-hmm. talk about. We <laughs> should we admit that like we missed the first five minutes of the movie. Yeah, Because I we took did. the fucking wrong exit because I have to go to the movie theater that I particularly enjoy. <laughs> you do. Which the one is with the way recliners. Further. Yes. <laughs> so uh, in, at the very beginning, the Life Foundation, which is the evil company in the movie, discovers that there are symbiotic life forms on the movie. And by the way, I'm going to keep calling it symbiote because in the trailer they call it that. In the movie they call it symbiote. However, according to Merriam Webster's dictionary, dictionary, both are fine. So, because I'm Daniel, I'm going to call it yeah, symbiote. Of course. So, in this case, the symbiotes land, and this is where you pretty much stepped into the movie because mm-hmm. I was getting popcorn and drinks. Is the CEO, which is played by the villain in this, is trying to make essentially the next step, I guess, in human evolution. I was a little confused yeah, so, by so his motivation. His motivation, right? He runs this big company, but he's realizing that in the next. 10 years, humans are pretty much going to make Earth uninhabitable, right? Mm. So his thing is he he finds this other organism that needs us, needs humans to be able to live in this world. But at the same time, as soon as it bonds with you, you're able to live in their world too. So his idea is get everybody a symbiote, pack it up, leave the planet because the planet is going to be uninhabitable and go live on their planet. Sure. Without knowing, of course, how powerful these other aliens are, how much of you they actually take over. Fine. Uh, I, right. And that's that's the problem, I guess, that they run into in this where they don't know how much it's controlling you or how much you're controlling them. But the movie actually sets up that universe of you actually are more or less a partner with this symbiote instead. Mm-hmm. And when Brock finds out that they have been actually running tests on people that result in their deaths, then he wants to expose this evil company for what they are. And that's at the expense of his current girlfriend's job. And because of this, his girlfriend says, fuck you, man. You cost me my goddamn job. Breaks up with him. And he his was planning. Fiance. I thought he was planning on. Okay, no. so it was already his yeah. fiance. So she gives the ring right back to him and breaks up with him. Mm-hmm. And ends up dating a psychiatrist, a doctor. A doctor. 
which becomes a comedic character later of on. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, we essentially see Eddie Brock kind of spirals out of control for the next year or several months, right? You said he had and a show, then, too, at one point. Yeah, so he was he was a huge investigative reporter. He was given this show, and then he goes to meet with his boss, who's the dad from This Is Us, who broke my heart <laughs> several times. And he's like, I need you to go interview this guy. And he's like, I'm not going to fucking interview him. Like, he's a terrible person. And he's like, this is just your job. Like, go interview him. Do your fucking job. Right. And then, of course, he goes and asks all these questions like, tell me about all these people who have died. And then, <laughs> what's his name? Life Foundation ruins his life. Like, gets him kicked out of his apartment, makes him lose his job. Obviously, he loses his fiance, right? So he kind of is just a drunk mess for the next few months until one of the doctors comes to him and says... For no, I guess for, for no, no reason, reason yeah. Says he's doing all these experiments and killing people, and I'm not okay with it. I'm not going to the police because I'm worried about my family, but I'm going to go to you and sneak you in with all these cameras where they can clearly see who you are and clearly see me sneaking you in. To you, a ruined reporter who people wouldn't believe anyway. Right. Like, that's one of the, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Whatever. They needed to advance the plot. So he goes in and sees all these people, right, who are, like, dying and being taken over by these symbiotes. Being experimented right. on, yeah. And he goes to save one of his friends and... That's when Venom happens to be to that him. one of them is the homeless lady that mm-hmm. he often ran into. But yeah, that's when the Eddie the Venom symbiote, I guess, leaves her and goes into his ear in his body up his fucking asshole, <laughs> which they let her said like fucking. Remember we said that in the fucking trailer. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's going up his fucking asshole, and it turns out that Tom Hardy maybe he listens to the podcast, but there's a fucking line in there that he says, and it went up went up my ass, goes up his ass, and I'm like, it goes up all of their fucking asses. And I fucking knew it. Good job, Tom Hardy. Are you friend are you friends with Jeff? Have you been talking to Jeff? Come <laughs> on, man. Shit. <laughs> so he bonds with Venom and we get a long time of he thinks he's going crazy, right? Obviously. And these guys are coming after him, and of course Venom's doing his Venom thing and killing all these guys and saving him. And then he meets up with his ex girlfriend who's now dating that doctor, and the doctor runs tests, and then we find out that sound hurts the symbiote and that the symbiote is eating his heart slowly. And they get the symbiote out of him, and he's like, "I'm fucking done," and like he leaves. Well, the symbiote was saying, "No, I, I can heal you. Like I'm not eating your heart," and that was never really resolved. No, really, never. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so then Tom Hardy, now without Venom, gets taken by the Life Foundation, and they're taking him out to shoot him, and they're taking a ridiculously long time to shoot him, enough time for Venom to show up and save him. Right. And then, by the way, Eddie Brock went through these symptoms, heavy fucking symptoms yeah. after taking on the symbiote. And what and if they do the fucking thing that they do in all these superhero movies, like in Ghost Rider, like, oh, I have to drink a lot of water. And as soon as he drinks it, like, it turns into steam mm-hmm. because he's a hothead, because he's Ghost Rider. And this one, he's eating, like, rotten fish and tater dry tots. tater tots. Like, ooh, there's this weird quirk. And Catwoman, like, I, I need to drink, I need to eat cat things and drink a shit ton of milk. Like, ooh, give me that milk. Like, they do that fucking thing. Right. And I'm like, fuck off, movie. Like, I hate that shit. Really hate that shit. But I... I don't know. Like, fine. <laughs> they did it. They did it. Uh, but the but you get to see fucking Venom. You get to see him giant and massive straight mm-hmm. out of the comic book. And I know some of the Venom fans are like, but he didn't have the white spider. It's like, Who what? Cares? how fucking close do you want it? Jesus, fuck, man. Fucking, how, would you want him to have to explain why he wears a fucking white spider on his fucking chest? Fuck off, man. And they made a movie. Like, okay, well, let's continue with the plot still, where the villain has his own symbiote in mm-hmm. him. Doesn't go through any of the symptoms, nope. apparently, because he's a, maybe a more perfect match, and that might have been the, the, the point they were trying to make, because it is revealed that Eddie Brock's symbiote is actually also a loser on his own home and not the strongest symbiote either. So it just happens to be that they're compatible, mm-hmm. but he still goes through those symptoms. And this particular villain, which is Riot, is much stronger than Venom, much bigger, can do way more things, like making giant axes, giant fucking scythes out of his fucking arms, while still working with with the CEO bad guy. So then the plan is to launch the spaceship into space to go get more symbiotes to come back to essentially take over the entire world, Alien right? invasion. Right. 
So that's what they're going to do. And then, of course, Venom is like, no, we have to save the world because you changed my mind, Eddie Brock. And why'd and you change his mind, just, though? He changed his mind. We don't know. <laughs> and so then they go and they're fighting and there's this huge fight scene, obviously. And then they get merged into one and then they're separated again. And then you're fighting some more. And then what's her name comes and turns up the sound thing and, like, kills them both and then lights something on fire and blows up the rocket ship. And that's how Riot dies. And then... Venom turns into a parachute to slowly guide Eddie Brock down into the water. And we're and says, led to believe that he's... Goodbye, Eddie Brock. Yeah, and it's like, aw, Venom. <laughs> I thought 0% of that, but whatever. <laughs> oh, what about when they got separated and you see like the little symbiote like crawling into ve- uh, up to Eddie Brock who had been stabbed through the chest mm-hmm. by one of Riot's things? Like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I guess we're supposed to feel for like, this. Like, feel bad, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> And then, of course, the very last scene, you see Eddie Brock talking to his old girlfriend about all this stuff. And then Venom goes, we're going to make her our girlfriend again. And that's when it's confirmed that the symbiote actually ended up living through that explosion. Right. And then you get to see Stan Lee and his little dog. And I guess Venom wanted to eat the dog, I think. He alludes he to that to or something. He's like, mm, yeah. delicious. Yeah, and that would have been fucking really funny if he ate Stan Lee's dog. <laughs> But uh, at the you know it ends with a scene of of him eating a criminal, which is what we saw in the trailer mm-hmm. of of I'm gonna eat your arms, your legs, your your head, and you're just gonna be a torso and just a rolling turd. down the street like a turd in the wind. And then we get mm, it's Venom. <laughs> the, the Eminem song, yeah. How's that Eminem song go, Kelly? <laughs> mm, it's Venom. Don't venom. know what hit him. Venom, venom, venom. <laughs> 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 it's like, what the fuck is this? It's Eminem. <laughs> All right, Eminem. It's you tried. <laughs> I mean, he's not angry anymore. He's not an angry teenager. So nah. can he, he really? I don't think he was ever a teenager. But oh, all right, he's he's not an angry old man. But then you get the mid credits scene, Ooh. which the director told told us like you would you would be foolish to walk mm-hmm. away, and he mm-hmm. wasn't kidding. Like there is actually a scene. Where he goes into the, I think it was Santa Prisca prison. Yeah. And, and Ronald and... McDonald. <laughs> 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 fucking poor, t- poor Woody Harrelson. Although I'm fucking so excited that Woody Harrelson is playing Carnage. Because In a he, Ronald McDonald wig. <laughs> they slapped the fucking red, bright wet red wig on him mm-hmm. and said, just, just film the fucking scene, dude. And sure enough, for no reason, he goes, as soon as I get out of here. And I will. There's going to be. And he looks at the camera. Carnage. <laughs> Venom fanboys, right? You want number two. It's a coming. You're going to see me as Carnage with my bright red wig. And Tom Hardy's like, all right. And then that's the end of the movie. It's like, why is he threatening Tom Hardy? Like, why is he upset at him? Why is he even threatening to leave? Why does he say well, Carnage? Be- <laughs> Because Tom Hardy's a reporter who's writing his story, and he wants to be spooky. I don't know. Carnage confirmed for Venom number two. There you go. Done. Done. TCO. Yeah, that was it. That was the story. That was the plot. (laughs) Which is, by the way, the weakest part of this movie is the fucking plot. Uh, Yes. It's not a great plot. It's a better plot than the Avengers. It's a better plot than a lot of the MCU movies. They made Venom work without Spider-Man. It kept me interested. It was the plot that we expected from a solo Venom movie. I felt that Venom was Venom. They compared it to Iron Man. And I was like, please, don't. Like, Venom is way better than fucking Iron Man. (laughs) Let's not fucking do this. (laughs) Don't insult Venom. There were a lot of open ends. Sure. And I never really felt for any of the moments that they wanted me to feel for. Right? You didn't get me attached enough. I wasn't like, oh, he lost his girlfriend. Or, oh, Venom's dead. Or, oh, no, Eddie Brock is dead. Like, I knew that none of those things were really going to stay the way that Mm -hmm. they were. Right? What about the Bride of Venom that ended up showing up for a brief moment? She wore the symbiote. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people on Twitter freaked out, like, what the fuck is Sony doing? And it's like, she's a fucking character in the comics, guys. Jesus, fuck. And that's literally what it says on the cover, the Bride of Venom. And she looks almost exactly... Like what you saw in the movie, except comics, so giant fucking tits. But well, in this case... Venom liked her. I like her. <laughs> yeah, he kept saying Why? That. Why do you like her? That's actually one of the... Well, and I explained to you, it's because their personalities are I merging. Guess. They're connected. But in this case, like, the whole bit of... Like, yeah, there's some problems there. But a lot of people actually really like the interaction between Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy because he also played 
the Venom voice oh. and, and did the motion capture for Venom. Cool. So people were like, that interaction was really fucking good, and they found it entertaining. There wasn't a joke every minute, like in the MCU there, oh, movies. Oh, man. How could we have watched it? Like the fake Twitter account, Lord Feige, was like, I didn't like Venom. It didn't have a joke every minute like the MCU movies. It only had it once every 10 minutes. That's not enough. It's like, thank God. Fuck. I don't want a Thor Ragnarok or a fucking Guardians 2. Mm-hmm. This worked out. Like there was enough brevity and there's a lot enough humor, but not too much. Right. And the humor wasn't MCU humor, which I also enjoyed. So... Uh, the plot, again, as we said, was the weakest portion of it, but let's move on to the second part, which is the acting by, let's be realistic, Tom Hardy. <laughs> Only Tom Hardy. I mean, he did good, as we always expect Tom Hardy to do. He carried the whole fucking mm-hmm. movie. It had, If it had been, like, there's a few actors that were like, all right, we'd go see it for them, but if it had been like a no-namer, fuck this fucking movie. Right. Like, it not as good. Right. Tom Hardy does play like that pseudo-addict, that pseudo, which is, I think, what he went for. In which he was sweating constantly. Mm-hmm. He has something inside of him. He was going against authority. And then on top of that, he played Venom, his voice, the motion capture, everything on there. Like, I'm like, this is fucking, it's Tom Hardy really diving into the role. And I think he did a really good job. I definitely agree. Again, that's what we expected from Tom Hardy. You know, the the villain and the scientist and the, it, I'm just like, okay, you're just a generic villain. You're a generic scientist. You're sure. a generic girlfriend, right? You still, she was all right. Uh, like, she was okay. Whatever, but t- Tom Hardy was Tom Hardy, and now that because I didn't know he played Venom too, so now that you say that, yeah, he really, yeah, he did a great job playing two vastly different characters, right? Who were working together, but then kind of at war with each other because Venom the whole time is like, "I'm gonna go eat those brains," and he's like, "We can't, let's eat tater tots," so like you can't eat, <laughs> can't eat brains. And that's the thing that symbiote, like when they went to the supermarket, he's like, "All right, what do you want?" He's like, I'm, "We're hungry." It's like, "All right, what do you want? Chocolate and taters." All right. And that's what he normally, like, they found a compromise, except right. when there's bad guys around, they can fucking eat them and they eat, do it. Eat brains. And that's one of the things that it's like, all right, people wanted this to be an R-rated movie, ended up being PG-13. Someone who works at a comic shop, I've had a lot of kids and teenagers come in like, do you have any Venom comics? I just saw the movie. I don't, I, I, they don't say that, but they're like, do you have any Venom comics? I'm like, did you see the movie? Yeah, I just saw it today. It's like, this is why we're looking for right. Venom comics. I'm fucking glad this was not rated <laughs> R so that you kids can see that can movie see and become a fan it. of it. So let's go sell you some comics. I mean, there wasn't any part of that movie where I was like, yes, this would have benefited by me actually seeing him crack open a head to eat brains. Or blood or anything. Right. Like, there, we wouldn't have been talking about this fucking box office. Mm-hmm. It would have been a box office bomb if it had been rated R. Right. So fuck you if you thought this would have been somehow improved by a rated R rating. No, it would not have been. It was fine. And kids and teenagers got to go see it because that's it's a PG-13 movie and they all see it anyway. Mm-hmm. And they become fans of it. Like even like the scariest part of that, like I can't even really think of a scary portion of that that's like, oh no, kids maybe shouldn't see this. Like, like I guess maybe, when Tom Hardy vomits and that has nothing to do with Venom. I mean, there's that, but maybe like the people having seizures because the thing is like killing them. Oh, maybe that first patient. Yeah. yeah. That gets kind of contorted a little mm-hmm. bit, but eh. <laughs> <laughs> They'll live. <laughs> it's one scene. Next up on our list, we have the directing. They uh, <laughs> puts in enough shots of Venom, like yeah. posing I mean, and roaring up into wanted. the sky and looking cool because that's how the Venom fans are. And I'm confirmed by several interactions this week that they like the movie because he looks cool in it because, again, that is Venom. Right. And they just want Venom to look cool. And that's what the director ended up doing. They gave us a lot of Venom. So it wasn't Spider-Man 3. You, you want this fucking character? You got it. And you got a story without Spider-Man. On top of that, they fucking pulled the goddamn miracle in this bitch. And it worked out okay. Like, the box office is strong. The directing, again, it is not a work of art. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see any scene that's like, oh, that's really nice. Like, you know, you, you, you they could have really taken their time, but that's not the movie they were making. Right. You could have had close-up the- shots when he's up on the fucking roof on top of the building. You could have a close-up shot of going up the arms and seeing all the veins. And then up into the fucking face. And then the you could have seen the city reflected in his eyes as he's saying, I like it up here it's peaceful that's what i would have fucking done and that's what a director would have done but all right they, let's get a shot directed, of the fucking monster they directed the movie that we expected sure so there you go god i wish i had money to redirect these fucking things <laughs> <laughs> and our final piece that we're going to talk about is the special effects yeah that's kind of coupled in with the directing mm-hmm. because the cinematographers 
there was nothing in there that I was like, that looks really fucking fake. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, maybe the bit where half his face is revealed of Tom Hardy and then it yes. goes back into the Venom. I, that, yes, I would agree with that Every- part. But even, like, when he's on his motorcycle and he's getting his Venom arms and sure, all this kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, it still it looked okay. It looked real. Yeah. Like, it looked like they actually had little, I don't know if they did, but it looked like they had little bits of plastic or rubber or whatever. Mm-hmm in the Venom character itself did not look overly cartoonish. Like it, it did not look like the Hulk in Ragnarok, right, right. <laughs> you know, so it looked right. And, and I know fans of Venom are really happy. It mm-hmm. looked like the character Todd McFarlane, who is one of the co-creators of Venom. He said he would have made a couple of changes. Like he would have made the, the smile less big. And then he would have put the, like the little spikes on there. But I, I was, he even Photoshopped it himself in, mm-hmm. in two minutes. And he's like, this is this is what I would have done. And I'm like, that actually looks worse. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> right, right. Nice try. But they did fine. Like, the look of Venom is spot on. You see the giant tongue. The one thing you don't see is the green drool or the green slime. But it would have looked weird mm-hmm. with this realistic, I guess, realistic take on Venom. So, to me, it worked out really well. The... The special effects of them ripping each other apart, the symbiotes fighting, and then mm-hmm. you see the little bodies on the inside. Like, that looked amazing. They even slowed down the camera so you get a nice look at that or the slow down the special effect. So I, all of that was fucking solid. Like, you got a lot of special effects. You got a lot of action scenes. And you got a lot of Venom. I think those special effects, too, are what is going to keep people coming back for a second and third and fourth showing, right? Because, like you said, if it was real cheesy looking, because... Venom's the star of it. So if they didn't nail that piece, I don't think it would have been as successful as it is. Sure. Absolutely. And with the new ones, we're going to get a little bit of that. Uh, I do want to give you some trivia on Ooh. the character, but we'll do that after our rating real quick, just so we can theorize. So at the this is end. out of Frozen Tater Tots. Out of five out of Frozen Tater five Tots. Five Frozen Tater Tots. How, how do we rate this, though? I. What do you mean? Like the brocat? They haven't heard a rating in a while. Like oh. I rate it as a movie. So I rate it as my enjoyment of it. Okay. <laughs> and you rate it as a movie. So obviously yours is going to be lower than mine. Sure. I am going to go out of three Frozen Tater Tots. You're going to give it three out of five. Three out of five. Three okay. out of five frozen tater tots. Again, because even though it didn't have a lot for me, right? I wasn't really that invested. It was still entertaining. And I think it was, again, the movie that they set out to make, the movie that people wanted. I, gi- I give it uh, two frozen tater tots mm-hmm. out of five. And again, because comparing it to my favorite movie of all time, which is The Fountain, it's which is a five, I'm not going to put it up there with that. Of course not. And it's not a great movie. But it is better than most of the <laughs> MCU, most superhero right, movies, right. I guess I would say, in the grand scheme of things. But even those aren't great movies anyway. So the bar is pretty low when you think about it. Like you've got Dark Knight way up there. You've mm-hmm. got Mask of the Phantasm even higher than that. But it's like, yeah, like where do you go from that? Batman Begins, yeah, and so on. But it's, yeah, two frozen tater tots. The plot is okay. Not great. Fairly forgettable. Tom Hardy pulled me through the rest of the mm-hmm. movie, though. And that's where... It's worth seeing for Tom's performance, absolutely. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him in Venom 2 and 3. And I'm looking forward to seeing Sony. And again, congratulations, Sony, for having a success here where you can move forward with Mobius. You can move forward with Venom 2 and 3. You can move forward with the Craven movie. You don't need Disney. You don't need Marvel Studios. You, you don't can need make Spider-Man. This. You don't need fucking Spider-Man. You can do this on your own. Mm-hmm. People will come out. They'll watch it. They'll give you money. We're rooting for you guys, and this is them saying, we can do this, and good on you guys. Congrats. So before we wrap up, what is your little bit of trivia that you have for us? So I was listening to Word Balloon, Mm -hmm. and it was the co-creator of Venom, not Todd McFarlane, and he said that originally the character of Venom was going to be a female. So the uh, and you you actually see technically two appearances because he admitted that and I always point out like that's actually the first appearance of Venom is in Web of Spider Man where he pushes Peter Parker in front of the subway train Mm -hmm. and he's like holy shit and he jumps out of the way just in time and he's like that was weird my spider sense didn't go off and that's supposed to be like oh it's Venom because it's where's the symbiote and Mm -hmm. it was a part of him so it doesn't warn him against himself is Mm -hmm. the whole idea. But uh, the that's later on is revealed to be Venom, which later on is shown to be Eddie Brock. But when he was writing those issues, because it happens twice, one of them he gets pulled off a building and he's like, oh shit, I'm falling. And it's again that hand. It's it's the female character. Wow. So it's actually a girl's, a woman's hand that's pushing him. Mm-hmm. And But when you see the comic, like now that I know, it's like, oh yeah, I guess I can see that. But it was so like off the panel that you just see a right. hand. Uh, but his idea of Venom, and he said he didn't go far beyond the concept of I wanted to make a villain that can stand 
toe to toe with Spider-Man that is stronger than Spider-Man. But the whole thing is the reason that she hated Spider-Man is because she was she had she was pregnant with a baby and as she was going into labor. Her husband goes out to hail a cab like, hey, taxi, taxi. But uh, Spider-Man happens to swing by chasing the villain. The taxi driver gets distracted, runs into her husband, kills him. And out of the stress for that, she starts going. She loses. She has a miscarriage oh, of the shit. baby, goes into a coma, blames Spider-Man for wrecking her fucking life. I would have lost her husband, lost her baby. baby. And because of that hatred, the symbiote gets attracted to her huh. because he also ha- it also has a hatred to Spider-Man. And now her thing is just to kill Spider-Man. That and that was a way the better thing. movie. I mean, Probably. way better story. <laughs> well, story, yeah. Um, but then we could have Tom Hardy. He right. could play a woman. <laughs> this is Doubtfire True. it up. <laughs> and uh, they, Todd McFarlane ended up redesigning it. And even he said this wouldn't happen now. But back then, this is why this happened. Mm-hmm. He couldn't imagine a woman being strong enough to, physically strong enough to stand up to right. Spider-Man. So instead, he's like, why don't, why don't we use Eddie Brock? And buff him up, and that'll be the villain. And you know they have had fucking success with it. I don't of know if course. it would have happened if had it been this original design. But people kept asking him in the interview, like, "Well, what was your story after that?" And he's like, "I don't know. I didn't go far beyond that. Mm. Not even a design, because that was all Todd McFarlane." So right. I thought you would have found that interesting. That is really cool. I I would like to see this now. I hope that somebody brings this story back, like a what if. Yeah, I want to see that. Like, that's a way more compelling story than right. I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm angry now. <laughs> so that will wrap it up for our Venom review. Mm-hmm. Three Frozen Tater Tots and two. And also for the podcast for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, the best thing you can do for us is leave us a review on whatever podcatcher you use. That helps other people find us. Let your friends know about us. Reach out to us on Twitter at Reasons I'm Broke at Palpa Kelly. As always, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. I'm Darth Vee Daniel. I am Emperor Palpa Kelly. And Brokehead Core, all, all will, will be well. well.